And talk about true Patriots just like that. We're going to go ahead and move on to the AFC East breakdown. We're going to be starting with the Patriots right, this year. Sean. What a transition, folks. What a transition. Why did, why did we have to get away from that so quickly? You afraid <laughs> I was going to say something you didn't no, like? No, it was just right there for me. I had to take it. I don't get a good chance for transitions. That True true Patriots. It was speaking to me. True, true Patriots. Uh, I mean, yeah, they are they are a failure. So Yeah, uh, but first year in I don't know how long, 20 years without Bill Belichick. You got a new head coach in there. Some excitement in the mind, air. I don't mind. I honestly don't mind the hiring of Gerard Mayo as the new coach. I, I think that's actually a really decent hiring from the Patriots as it's baby bad Bill. as their team it's is. baby Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick Jr. Gerard Bill was, Belichick. Bill was getting too old. They went younger, and Bill decided to go even younger than them. So it's a win-win for everybody. Um, I want to take a quick look at their – uh, depth chart here because they've had a lot of changes. They no longer have the quarterback who's been there the last few years. Uh, good Lord, what is his name now? All I keep thinking of is Mac Zach Jones. Wilson. Mac, Mac Jones. Jones. There we go. I kept Jesus thinking of right. Zach Wilson. I mean, they're the same. They're the same person. No, one's Mac- a Mormon. One is a milf hunter, so we can't take that away from Zach Wilson. Well, they've got the complete opposite in Jacoby Brissett as going to most likely going to be their starter, if not for at least the first half of the season, if not the full season, at least the first half of the season. And then obviously draft pick of Drake May. Uh, Don't forget, they got Joe Milton, the third. Uh Joe Milton was slinging it out there. Joe Milton could be the guy that comes in and takes Drake May's job because he's just going to be another Mac Jones. Joe Milton will also be able to throw an orange 110 yards. That's the kind of guy I want on my team as a Patriot. An orange? I don't know. The Citrus Bowl a few years ago for Tennessee, uh, they had him throw an orange. He threw it 110 plus yards, so he's got an arm. Fair enough. Um, Skill-wise at the running back position, don't worry, they still have Ramondre, Ramondre Stevenson. And then they did uh, pat the backfield a little bit because they brought in Antonio Gibson, former commie. Uh, so running back-wise, I think they upgraded. Uh, Antonio Gibson is, in my eyes, much better than uh, Zeke Elliott. Uh, so I think I think their running back room really did improve. I mean, it's a different skill set, but it's a, it's a skill set that, that... – the Patriots have historically liked to use. Like I'm assuming Antonio Gibson's going to be used a lot running out of the backfield or not run catching balls out of the backfield. Um, excuse me. Um, Cause if, if, if Gerard has any kind of say in the way the offense is ran, you know, Bill clung to that running backs like James White and Kevin Falk. And I mean, you name it, they had, they had guy they had a guy that could come out of the backfield and be a decent check down for Tom Brady for years. So I'm, I like the move for their scheme, but the Patriots are overall boring. They are because when you look at the wide receiver room, you've got Kendrick Bourne, who's done absolutely nothing. You've got Jalen Rieger who gets passed around more than a wet towel. Uh, They do still have Kayshawn booty, uh, but I don't know how much he's going to play this year. Um, And then uh, rookies, a couple rookies that they brought in. You've got uh, Jalen Polk and then Javon Baker as well. You're overlooking overlooking Demario Douglas. Um, As a rookie last year, he had really good production with shitty quarterback play. Um, And who's the guy that kind of almost a journeyman in the league? He, um, He was on the Patriots last year and he was doing well before he got injured. Uh well, Juju? No, Juju. it might have been they Kendrick got... Bourne. It might have been I, I, Kendrick Bourne. Yeah, it was uh, Kendrick Bourne. I believe has only been on uh, the Patriots, so he's not yes. necessarily a journeyman. Uh, I think he's still under rookie contract. They do have he's KJ had an extension Osborne this last off season. They do have KJ Osborne who comes in from Minnesota. Um, uh, and I I take that back. Yeah, Kendrick Bourne. I think previously played in San Francisco. Um, but yeah, outside of that, uh, all of their guys have, have been there. 
uh, at the tight end position, they still have Hunter Henry. They did bring in Austin Hooper as well. Um, feels like Austin Hooper's been in the league for a really, really long time, uh, but he's still only like 28, maybe 29. And then they've got Jeez. rookie uh, Jaheim Bell. Uh, so offensively, they're getting much better position than where they have been in the past, though this does not exude, especially in the division, since their division has gotten better, exude more than maybe five wins. I thought he was a journeyman because he's definitely not on his rookie contract. He's a, he's a, this is seven year career. So. Nice. Uh, defensively, that's been, that has been uh, the Patriots uh, strong little foothold that they've had for a while with Bill Belichick there. Gerard Mayo uh, is a, one of the better linebackers in the history of the Patriots has been a really good defensive mind as he's been a coach, but they're still. Yes. And he used to play for the 49ers. You dick face. I did say that. You were too busy in your phone. Yeah. You trying pay to attention to the show. I'm, I'm still, I'm still going to find you for that. <laughs> uh, defensively. Wait, isn't Sean not... keeping track of it this time? No, it's still you. Oh, it's still me. <laughs> I failed so bad we gave it to you. <laughs> I gotta uh, start a new sheet. Defensively, they're still not very scary, uh, especially when we look at what they did last year. Yes, they they do have Christian Gonzalez, who is one of the best cornerbacks. Uh, especially as a rookie last year, uh, but he did get injured partway through. We'll have to see how he comes back. They do still have Matthew Judon. Um, they've got Kyle Duggar as well. Um, but overall, just th- I'm not I'm not scared by anybody uh, on that defensive side, regardless of if they brought in any uh, rookies as well, and, and most of them were late takes. Yeah, not worried about that defense at all. Uh, They're going to come out there and do what they usually do, have some highs, have some lows for the Patriots. They're not going to have a good year this year. This is not their year. I mean, truth be told, they're they're one of the most boring teams to be following in the league right now. I I think the most exciting thing about their storyline is seeing what Gerard Mayo can do as an NFL head coach. Um, I like the guy as a player. Um, Didn't like him as a Patriot because – you know, he probably beat the Chiefs a few different times, but I, I definitely liked his play style. So can that transfer to the coaching room? Does that transfer to leadership? I'm very interested and invested in that. And if there's any positives that they can take in the next year, you know, good on him. I think he brought in some really, really good coaches, but I this year is going to be a massive struggle. I think even more so than last season. Um, not because necessarily of the personnel, but really tough schedule this year, guys. They play some top teams almost every week. Uh, and obviously that depends on injuries and whatnot and top teams comparatively to them. But they start off the first four weeks, first first six weeks of the season, Bengals, Seahawks, Jets, Niners, Dolphins, Texans. I mean that they could be a, a pretty nice offer right there. Like, and then they and then they still play the Jags. They go back and play the Jets. You've got the Titans. You could maybe pull out a win there. You've got the Bears. You've got the Rams, Dolphins, Colts, Cardinals, Bills, Chargers, Bills. Like that does not exude very many wins. Not for not for a team in this stage. Like it's it's rough going for them this year. Uh, That's why I say if they if like if they if they get any wins like if they get if there's anything positive to roll into next season like he's he's making the best out of a bad situation because you you look at who's on their roster you look at the schedule and where where are the positives that are going to be taken in the next season like they got to fight and claw for that yeah and and so the question is is when do we think we see Drake May come in at quarterback. Looking I at think this we're going to have to see him uh, pretty early on. They're not going to have many wins for the first eight weeks of the season. You might as well put them on in between like eight and 12, somewhere in there. Whenever they're really struggling, they're pretty much eliminated from the playoff picture completely. I think so the only reason you fun. would keep him out is if you have an anomaly of a season and Jacoby Brissett and this offense is somehow on fire. You're, so you 
you given the history of where we have seen rookie quarterbacks over the last few years, especially those who don't have any talent around them, you're for putting Drake May into the fire, potentially getting really beat up because that offensive line isn't very good because he's not going to be able to get the ball out of his hands because he has no talent at the wide receiver position. You're okay with getting Drake May out there as early as possible, getting beat up and potentially not really learning the game at the NFL level. I feel like that's how you learn the game though. Like I understand the, the examples of like Jordan Love and Patrick Mahomes and other quarterbacks sitting behind good quarterbacks, but who's really in their quarterback room? You think he's going to absorb like a fuck ton of information on how to play the game from Jacoby Brissett? Like if he if he had a good quarterback to sit behind, I mean they wouldn't have drafted him in the first place. I don't I don't they wouldn't have been in this situation in the first place. But I, I feel like he's gonna he, to to get minutes under his belt like he should play this season Jacoby Brissett is not he's just a placeholder like he's not the future of your organization let him get out there and get used to it right now he gets his feet wet this is like pre 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 training camp for him for next year um I will say the coaching staff has come out and all but said that Joby Brissett is the starting quarterback for the season um, so that is where those rumors are coming from. The coaching staff seems pretty adamant that they will allow Drake May to sit for a while. I do agree that, yeah, he he doesn't really have a, a, a veteran quarterback that can really teach him the game there. Uh, Jacoby Brissett is not that guy. He is not him. But They're going to help and, him out as much as possible, but like he's not learning under like a good or great quarterback. In so the same I, vein, I feel like he should cut his teeth a little bit, you know, like, no, and I agree, and that's where I, I think I agree more with Sean. Don't let him play a majority of the season. Let him play at the end of the season when everything is is gone. Um, maybe you're getting the B team uh, or relaxed team from some of these other teams that you're going to be playing late in the season because they may already have uh, a playoff seed locked up um, and can go out there and kind of just sling it with with no pressure, added pressure from the fan base. We'll take the beginning of the season and learn the system. Learn the playbook, have no pressure that. on it. Play him the last, you know, from week 12, maybe week 14 on, finish off the last four to six games with no pressure from the fan base or or from the media in that area. Um, I, I realistically, if I was a coach, I wouldn't probably play him more than, than the last four games of the season. I think there's some other factors that will come into play, like how well the offensive line is playing and stuff like that and how uh, – yeah dire of a situation they're, they're looking at but i i think some experience this year is necessary for him and that franchise um because you know maybe he sucks and he shouldn't be the future but we'll see i'm gonna i'm gonna lean more on the sucky side i don't think a quarterback out of north carolina is going to do very well we've seen that uh not work in the in the very recent past but Vegas has their uh, total set at over under at four and a half. Where are we lining up? That's so tough, but I'm still going under. Ooh. Yeah, I got to go with under there. That's, that's a lot of wins for these boys. Yeah, four four wins, uh, five wins is way too much. If you set the line at two and a half, I think I might take the over on that um, just because you never know what happens at the end of the season. But five games – win your bet you better take the under 